What's up guys, Patrick Healy here at the world famous 5th Street Gym. I'm joined by Noelle McCallion, the current WBC Cruiserweight Champion of the World. What's going on, Noelle? Everything fine, my pleasure being here. My home gym, 5th Street Gym, always glad to be here. Let's do it. So we're going to break down some fights today. There's some topical fights, obviously the Anthony Joshua Dubois matchup. Crazy finish to that one. I wonder what your thoughts are on it. Let's let's. Why don't we act it out, huh? You want to be? Uh, I'll be Dubois here. So we're yeah. in the center of the ring. You're Joshua. So basically, what's what happened is Joshua got like very emotional and wanted to slug it out. He was not preparing his second and third hand. But he hurt him initially, right in the middle. Yeah, so show me what. Once I got hurt, Dubois, and then I start yeah. backing up. Where did Anthony go wrong? But he landed the right overhand and thought he got him. So. He, and, and then he, he, he wanted to land like his big shots, and he came with a long uppercut, uppercut from, from uh, outside, which was not his business. And he got caught with a short right hand. He was an actual puncher, too. If you were in Anthony Joshua's shoes, I'm the opponent here at Dubois. I'm hurt, and I'm backing up into the corner. Why don't you show the people here how you would get the finish? How would you stop him? Well, definitely, I would, I would set it up with, with my left. I would like go inside, inside the range, and then throw it up. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't throw it like from outside of the uh, of his distance. It was too far away and it was more comfortable for Dubois just like And as Dubois was backing up, would you maintain kind of yeah, jab the distance yeah. and push yeah. him into the corner? Yeah. Distance, that distance and then like go inside and then to the body first or straight away? You go, go to the, the chin if you're inside here and you block it with your left hand so you basically can see what I'm doing with this. Yeah. Like I'm closing kind of your eyes and here I'm in the ring for that one to set up all my punches. But if I'm here on the outside, like, you, you can see what I'm doing, right? And he was not that uh, shot from, from that uh, overhand, right? So we're still clear the ball was still there. That's why he was able to like out counter him with the right hand. And, and what's going through your mind when you have an opponent hurt and you're you're looking for the stoppage, but you know a hurt man is still dangerous, still, right? Still dangerous, so Dubois, yeah. as he's backing up into the corner, obviously he ended up getting that finish. Yeah. But when you're stalking a guy who's hurt, what are you thinking about? Is are you obviously conscious of? Hey, this is still a dangerous big guy who could throw a wild punch. How do you mitigate that? And how how much output do you want to do when you're trying to get that finish? Well, me personally, I always know what a hurt man is dangerous. So if I hurt somebody in the ring, I know. Oh, be careful that you don't get emotional or like over like uh, ran into his punches because if a guy's hurt, he, he will throw everything, you know, just to survive. So you have to be like. Very clear about your uh, second and third uh, attack, and like really set it up with the jab. Go inside the range, go inside the distance, and still be like dominating the situation. Not just go in and back. Yeah, especially not in this weight class because every punch can be uh, finished. With punch. And that's exactly what happened with Joshua, right? He threw yeah. that big uppercut from distance. And Dubois came over the top, and that was a wrap. He basically knocked him out by himself. He just he just ran into his punch. Yeah, he made it even worse. Of B-Ball versus Peter Bev. Who do you got in that fight? What do you think? You think B-Ball's in and out style is going to get it done? Well, it's very, very close because uh, Better Beer can finish the fight anymore because of his punching power and he's also good with Soviet technique. But I think at this at this time, uh, B-Ball is in his prime, so I think he, will, he has a small edge to a boxer. But Peter Bev's got that 100% finish rate. So if I'm Peter Bev and I'm coming at you like this, yeah. hands up, that guy seems like an absolute killer. But if you were B-Ball, how are you getting it done? By his style, he's always controlling the pace, controlling the distance, by right? in and out, in and out. So maybe better be will not be able to break his distance to land his big shots. Uh, B ball is like controlling the distance and uh, so break pace. that break that down a little bit. So if I'm if I'm a uh, beater belt and I'm trying to get a handle on the distance, yeah. But you're a guy like B ball who's constantly moving in and out, moving in and out. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to kind of paw at you to feel feel the range so I can work my way in? Or what's the strategy there? Well, I think Better B will try to walk him down with his punches, but B will probably, with, with his in and out, like control the distance from every angle and can uh, like land his shots from, from every angle. And he does it very well with the jab in, in and out and set up traps with the jab to land his right hand. That's what he always does. So in, out, and then with a double right, that's very effective. And I think this... Uh, He's in his prime now, age-wise, and I think Viterbi is now a little bit older and had a lot of fights. But again, 
uh, one punch can decide anything in that in that fight. But if it goes uh, the distance, I think Bivol has a small edge to, to win that. How important do you think Bivol's cardio is in this fight? Because if we compare Very it, if we compare it to Bivol versus Canelo, yeah. Canelo, like Biederbev, is a guy with power who's going to be coming forward the whole time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Bivol was able to handle Canelo in that matchup, but Biederbev, a bigger guy. Probably more powerful puncher, yeah. maybe more durable as well, able to withstand some of Bivol's offense. He's going to be in his face the entire time. So talk to me about what does Bivol got to do? He's got to be on his on his bike the, almost the whole fight, right? In yeah. and out, he constant be, movement. He has to be on his toes for 12 rounds. Like He, he can't like, close his eyes for a second because one shot can decide everything. He has, his conditioning has to be on top. His, uh, like uh, his car, you has to be on top. He has to be in tip-top shape to control the fight and dominate it over 12 rounds because it better be, can be dangerous any second. You can't close your eyes for a second. And it's not just uh, physical conditioning, right? It's also the mental, mental conditioning because yeah. you're a guy, you know, Noel is a world champion, world, world champion fighter. You've been in big time fights. Mm -hmm. So you understand at that high level the mental toll it takes on you. So Bivol has got a big task at hand, right? He has to focus. The focus is most important because if you lose the focus in like again in a second everything could be already over so who's your pick what do you think you think Bivol gets it done or you think Peter Bev finally tracks him down and gets that finish I think Bivol has a small edge on him now because of his because he's younger and he is like in tip-top shape he is like hungry and I think Peter Bev has like a lot of uh, tough hard fights a lot of big amateur career and I think he's a little bit older now so his timing might be a little bit off than Bivol is there it is. It looks like Bivol with that in and out style. Noel's, Noel's calling it. Bivol's going to get it done. We'll see. Everything can happen. It's boxing and it's with a ball puncher. So the Pod Matrix.